All right, before I teach you the next method, which is like simple linear combination, I want to try to help you understand why it works. Um, as you may or may not know about me, I really the only manipulative I have is candy. So these are the manipulatives we're going to use. These are X's. The Dove chocolates are X's. The uh, candy cane Hershey kisses are Y's. And the root beer barrels are going to be 1's. Okay, so to model this, I need two X's. So I need two Dove chocolates, which are my X's. I need one candy cane kiss, and then I need eight of these root beer barrels. And I was actually kind of afraid that I'd eaten one, but then I realized I had not. So two X's, one Y, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight ones. Okay, now over here, I have an X and a Y and five root beer barrels. Okay, so X plus Y equals five over here. Two X plus Y equals eight. Okay, so we have two equations. That makes this a system. So we're trying to figure out, we're trying to figure out what X and Y is, where they cross. But like, I don't want to convert these into slope intercept form. Now I get that these are easy to convert into slope intercept form, but like these are not. So I want to know how to do this while it's in standard form. And this method is actually really easy, but I want you to understand why you're doing it. And if at the end of this you don't understand, that's okay. I just want you to do it, okay? So right now, what do I know? I know that two X's and a Y equal eight, and one X and a Y equals five, okay? So this is five. Well, if I regrouped this, doesn't, aren't these two the same thing right here? an X, a Y, and five root beer barrels, an X, a Y, and five root beer barrels? Well then, what's left up here? I have an X and three root beer barrels. I know that X equals three because I know that these two quantities right here are equivalent, an X and a Y is five root beer barrels. So these two are equivalent. What's left is one X and three root beer barrels, so X equals three. Okay, so let's see what that looks like algebraically, okay? So I start off with my 2x, I'm going to kind of scoop this over here. I start off with my 2x and my y equals 8, okay? So I know that 1x and 1y is 5. So if I take away 1x and I take away 1y, it's the same thing as taking away 5 from this side, okay? Well, these zero away. 2x is minus 1x is 1x. 8 minus 5 is 3. Mathematically, that's what I'm doing. So let's look really quickly at what was what's different about what I had written down. Okay, when I wrote this down, okay, I did not write x and y equals 5. I wrote the opposite of both of these things. Okay, because I had to create a zero pair. I had to be able to erase something. Okay. So, originally I had this, right? So what I did was I subtracted x plus y equals 5 from this entire, sorry, subtracted x plus y equals 5 from that entire equation. And what that looked like was negative x minus y equals negative 5. So what I wound up doing was either finding or creating a zero pair. That's how linear combination works, is I find a zero pair and I eliminate, and again, the whole goal is to get rid of one of my variables. Okay, so we just talked about the thing with the candy, which I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat. Not, maybe not all of it, but maybe all of it. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So what does that mean for us mathematically? Okay, so here's what that means for us mathematically. It means that the way that linear combination works is we find or create a zero pair and we eliminate one variable in that way, okay? So the, the method is called linear combination elimination. So the combination part is where we add these two rows together. The elimination part is where we're eliminating one of the variables and pretty much all systems methods require depend on us eliminating something, okay? So what does that look like? If I look at this one, I have 5x plus 3y equals 25. 7x minus 3y equals negative 1. Well, right here, these are, these are both in standard form. My x, my y, my equal sign, and my constant are all lined up. So what that means is I can find a zero pair and eliminate it. Well, here I have 3y and negative 3y. So 
3 plus negative 3 cancels out. 5 plus 7 is 12 x's. 25 minus 1 is 24. When I divide that 12, that 12 x's by 12 and the 24 by 12, I get x equals 2. Boom, right there I found my x value. Now that I know my x value, I can use it to find my y value. Now remember, we always go back to the original equation. So I have 5x. Well, x is 2. Let me just write it again. There's my x. I don't know what y is yet. That's a 5. Okay. Well, 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 3y equals 25. Now all I'm doing is solving this equation. 3y equals 15, y equals 5. Okay, now how could I do this in my calculator? I could pretty much do the same thing, right? Once I got this, hopefully you wouldn't need to put that in the calculator, but I mean, I suppose you could. Um, I could put, let's, let's just go down to here. I could put 5 times 2 plus 3x equals 25. Okay, oh my gosh, that is crazy times right there. Um, okay, and then I look for the row where they're the same. Well, right there at 5, y is 5. That's where my answer is the same. Okay, and this is really all you have to do for linear combination. So I take the x and the y, and I make an ordered pair out of it. I can test it by plugging into this one. 7 times 2 is 14. 3 times 5 is 15. 14 minus 15 is negative 1, and so it works. Okay, so now that we've done that, so this one was pretty easy. This one's different. Tell me what you see that's different about this one. Pause for a second. Just jot down, like, in the window that pops up. What's different about this one? <laughs> Michelle Tice knows. Um, okay, so the first thing that I see is there's no zero pair. Now, I see an opposite here, but... 4 is not the opposite of negative, 4 and negative 5 are not opposites. They just happen to both have different signs. Here, 3 and negative 3 are, they make a zero pair. So this time I don't have a zero pair, I gotta make a zero pair. Well, it would be really easy for me to find the opposite of 3 just by multiplying everything here, by taking the opposite of everything in this equation. That would give me negative 3x plus 5y and negative 14. Again, remember, all I'm doing is taking the opposite of those. That's negative 14. I know it looks like 74, okay? Now let me rewrite this line down here. 3x plus 4y equals negative 22. Well, now I see a zero pair, right? So I can zero this out, and then I add, see again, I'm eliminating, I zeroed that out to eliminate the x variable, and now I'm going to combine the linear equations to figure out what y is. So 4 plus 5 is 9y. Uh, negative 22 and negative 14 is negative 36. And don't be afraid to rely on your trusted, trusted calculator fairies to get that answer for you. When I divide everything by 9, I get uh, y equals negative 4. Y'all, she's like serious in my class. My kids, even when simple stuff like 5 minus 3, I show them plugging it in and they're like, miss, we already know the answer. I'm like, okay, but just in case, I hope you heard that because seriously, uh, she, Ms. Schultz just said she plugs everything in the calculator. I am exactly the same way. Like so now, I may not do it like when I'm like just doing stuff like this, but if it's a test, if it's something that like really counts, I put everything in. Like I put two plus two, one plus three. I put everything in the calculator because I'm not trying to make a mistake like that. Okay. Well, now that I know what y is, I can go back to one of these equations. Now remember, you see how I like multiplied this one. I converted this one to that. I never use an equation that I did math on because I might have screwed up because I do that. All right? I always go back to one of the originals. So I'm going to use the top one just because it's the top one. Okay? So 3x, I'm going to rewrite it so that we can see it. 3x plus 4y equals negative 22. Well, I know what y is. It's negative 4. 3x plus 4 times negative 4 equals negative 22. Well, that's 3x plus negative 16. I'm just going to say minus 16 equals negative 22. When I add 16 to both sides, I get 3x equals, I don't know, uh, negative 22 plus 16. Okay, negative 6. 
I divide by 3, I get x equals negative 2. If I want to confirm that, I can say, well, 3 times negative 2 with this other equation, minus 4 times negative 4 should equal 14. Well, let's see if it does. I got a bad feeling about this. Okay, 3 times negative 2 minus 4 times negative 4 is 10. So what have I done wrong? Oh, y'all? Well, did I? What have I done wrong? Let's pause and think about it. What did I do wrong? Did anybody find it? I found it. Dang it, y'all, seriously. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and make the mark myself. Okay, on the wall. I will make it in Molly's color, like light blue. But, yeah, I messed up. I should have written minus 5y. Darn it. Darn it. Okay, let me see if that gives me the right answer. Oh, there it is. Yep. Okay, but you guys, look, isn't this a perfect reason to check my work? Because what if I what if that what if I had actually gotten this wrong? The second I went and plugged it back in, I knew something wasn't right. The something that wasn't right was that I can't write things down, but the but you know, I could have been something else. So in any case, my order pair solution is going to be negative two, negative four. All right. Um, we have a word problem example, but I want to go through this one with you in class. Um, so let's talk about this one because we've been struggling with equations. Let's talk about this one um, in class and then I will make a separate video on how to do it with word problems. But hold the phone because Ms. Schultz has just pointed something out. Remember, we also have our calculators that will do equations for us. And we, I kind of showed you on this one, but check this out. What I could have also done is I could have put, um, I could have plugged this in right here into my calculator to, to solve it. Again, remember, like if you can't do this solving by hand, you got to use your calculator at this point, okay? That does not mean you don't got to get good at it, but you got to do it. So again, just as a reminder, 3x minus 4, whoops, nope, there's no minus there. Mm -mm, that's not it. That's not it. Mm -mm. Um, delete. Minus, wait, sorry, plus 4 times negative 4. I'm looking for that to equal 20, negative 22. So when I go to the table, I'm looking for negative 22. There it is at negative 2, which is the same exact thing I got right here. Okay? So remember, we can always use our calculator. So if you're like not feeling it, or if you just want to make sure like that you're getting it right, you can do this work by hand, and then you can still check it in the calculator. Or if you're not feeling confident about your equation solving abilities and you just want to practice the systems, you can do it in the calculator. All right?